Get your decade ahead horoscope for your sign at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 23rd, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. And there is such power, such clarity, but it is in many ways the very beginning. At the same time though, we have energy of heart, energy of Venus that can feel downright confusing, but that's okay. Sometimes we need to have that little bit of confusion before we get to the powerful clarity, and the clarity comes as we get to the end of the week. So let's take it one at a time. I am gonna start with Venus because it is right out of the gate as we start this week that Venus will be standing across the sky from Jupiter and reaching out in a conversation of tension with Neptune. This is important for a few reasons. One is the fact that we have had these types of Neptunian connections, Neptunian energy in the air with us since late May. Back in late May, it was Mercury. Then we had that new moon. Then we had the sun. Now it's Venus's turn to stand across from Jupiter and speak in tension with Neptune. So if you think about it, late last month it was about mind and how we're thinking and then it became about how we are feeling what we really want on an emotional level and then it was about who we believe we are and our power and now it comes to heart what it is that we are truly wanting in our heart of hearts and where we believe that our greatest joys are going to come from well with this energy on the one hand with jupiter standing across the sky there's a propensity to overdo it here. Now this is true with money, this is true with love as well. And we have that connection with Neptune. Now that is what I think is going to be more notable here because that connection with Jupiter in and of itself can also be very aspirational. It's like you see your way towards a more optimistic future where it comes to matters of heart, where it comes to matters of money. However, it is that connection with Neptune that does suggest we may not be seeing things as clearly as we deserve to, or as clearly as they actually are. So for some, there's gonna be a lot of over-optimism here. For others, it might go the other way. It could be some pessimism. For some still, it could be a lot of pouring out, okay? So whether it's pouring of your heart, pouring of emotion, or even spending a lot, and then, looking at it from a bit of a distance, needing to take a little bit of a step back and perhaps getting caught up in a moment that isn't necessarily a very grounded moment at that. And so how do we balance this? Well, the one thing I have been saying again and again for these last few weeks is the great antidote of our time right now, of these weeks really, is patience. Patience goes such a long way under a sky like this. A patience really for the last four weeks has been the way in which we can navigate this time the best and so mercury right now we are in a mercury retrograde season I'll talk more about that in a moment but really right now mercury is direct but has entered shadow this is the ground that mercury will rewalk once it is that he is retrograde once we move into the month of July and so this is not a time for the new, okay? It's not necessarily a time for big investments, big beginnings, uh, for throwing you know, caution to the wind and deciding that you're gonna uh, put all your chips on one bet, if you will. Uh, that's one way to understand it. Uh, whether that is a bet that has to do with something that you want to buy, something that you want to uh, actually put your heart and soul into. Because what happens with heart and soul is that hearts can change, our souls evolve. And what it is we think we want one moment could actually end up being something very different another. But also something that we may really, really want in one moment actually may not be as good for us in a higher, more loving vision for our lives. But that's hard to see sometimes when we're very caught up in a moment. What this energy is saying is getting so caught up, thinking all of our, our heart and our love and the future of any love we're gonna feel is about what's happening right now. 
And of course, that isn't the case. If you're here, there's hope, right? As my dad likes to say, but also if you're here, it means that there's love. You are in and of yourself an expression of love. Yes, that's true. But also we are here to share love. We're here to give and accept love from each other. And if you are here, it means that you are worthy of love. And it means that there's more love to experience, to share, to give, to receive from others, that that is natural, that is as natural as breath, that you will know love and you will know love again and that there's all kinds of love in the world for us to celebrate, to live in, to accept and to give. And it can feel very much like one moment is all there is, right? On the level of love, yes, but also on the level of, okay, I have to have this right now. I have to make this move, this investment, uh, this sense of change, this financial opportunity. It's only going to come once. The thing is, though, that the universe is abundant. It is abundant. There is always another chance. And if it feels like all of our heart, all of our desires, all of the love we're ever going to experience kind of rests on a moment, well, that's telling you to take a step back right there. Um, there's another way this energy can be realized as well, and that is overindulgence. And that is something to be careful of here. Now, whether it is that we're overindulging in an emotion that maybe isn't the best emotion for us, because with this energy, it can feel a little bit like there is some fluctuation there. So again, that's why I say patience, uh, whatever it is that helps you to feel more grounded. Now, whether that's grounded in spiritual principles or grounded in your body, it's a good idea to practice that as we are starting this week because some of us may need that. But where it is that uh, we are finding ourselves feeling things very strongly, it's important to understand that feelings come and go. Like really, it's just a feeling. Now that doesn't mean it isn't valid. Of course, what you feel is valid and it matters and deserves to only be shared with those who are going to uh, hold it in a safe space. But at the same time, feelings change and they move through us. And the great hope we have is to learn about ourselves from our feelings, to grow in some way spiritually by using our feelings as a tool of deeper inquiry. There is an escapist tendency here as well. And that's where some of us are going to have to be even more careful. Whether that escapist energy uh, is being realized in terms of uh, not wanting to deal with reality so that we have these extended meditation sessions, but they're not really about meditation. They're about uh, being in an obsessive energy. That's going to be a tendency to watch out for. And of course, if it is uh, that you are someone or you know someone who likes to partake in activities um, or substances that have an escapist uh, part to them, well, this is where you want to be sure to be as careful as possible because the tendency is there to overdo it and to overdo it a lot and not realize it. So again, there is a way of being grounded that is also about being honest with ourselves. That that's really what it is that we're going for. And that is going to be part of the opportunity with this energy, taking the best of care of ourselves. Again, I think it's like the third or fourth time I'm saying patience, being patient with ourselves, patient with our emotions, with our feelings, uh, with our own reactions as well. As much as we can do that, the more it is that we will get to the wonderful energy that starts finding us as we get to the end of the week. So the energy starts to change in important ways in the late part of the week, right around Thursday, a Friday, depending on where you are on the planet, there's a couple of notable things happening. So the energy of freedom and excitement and clarity, well, that's the sun speaking in harmony with Uranus. I love this energy. I have to say it's fun. As I said, it's light, but it's also really clear. It's about understanding where it is that we're going to be able to have the right perception to see what it is that's going to help us to feel more empowered, more liberated, uh, more open. And there's a sense of creativity with this energy as well and a sense of excitement. And so it's almost like the opposite of the energy as we start this week, because as we're starting this week, Neptune has just turned retrograde. Neptune is speaking with Venus. All of that energy can magnify um, really a sense of confusion and a lack of clarity. 
And then we get towards the end of the week and it's this breakthrough. It is uh, seeing what it is that's really gonna help us to leap into a more prosperous and more empowered future and the willingness to take that action. Now, it's really important here to trust the energy and to trust what is most spontaneous, uh, what it is that feels it's gonna be exciting in a moment. Uh, and where it is that we are coming to a clarity as to what action is going to move us out of uncertainty and instead towards empowerment. That really is key. As we're starting this week, some of us out there, and it's important to provide emotional support to ourselves and to each other, but some of us may have a stronger focus on what hasn't worked or on our disappointments uh, than they need to. Okay, so there are times to learn from what hasn't worked in the past and then there are times when we're looking at the past and what hasn't worked as a way of feeling down on ourselves and that's going to be something to be careful of but it is as we get towards the end of the week that it's almost like in a split second we see how it is that we can move forward and that really is where the power is i uh, think i've always been someone who is interested in the future and i think that's because having a glimpse into the future is actually one very powerful way to have hope and to be willing to keep your eyes on the future is also a very powerful way to move through today to help you to navigate through what sometimes can feel uncertain in the day and having an eye to the future and especially when it is an optimistic future that can start to reveal itself to us as we get to the end of the week well that makes it uh, that much more exciting to know that we are moving in a positive direction. And sometimes you don't have to know all the details, but to feel it is enough. And if you feel it, you know it, and you will know what right action it is that's gonna to help to propel you forward. And whether that forward is a different emotional state, whether that is greater opportunity, greater happiness, that glimpse will come along with a spontaneous opportunity to take action and it is that action that helps us to improve our circumstance. Now, under the same sky in the late part of the week, we are also going to have a uh, truly important uh, celestial event take place. Now, it may not seem huge on the surface when I describe it to you, okay? But it's important for what it is activating, which is the eclipse point. If you think back, right around January 21st, we had a lunar eclipse. It was one of the last of a series of eclipses to take place in the sign of Leo. And it was at that time that I mentioned, and I believe I mentioned it in the overview, I know that I mentioned it in a couple of the year ahead special horoscopes that I did, where I thought it was notable. And that was now. And that was the activation of the eclipse point. It is going to be right around Thursday or Friday, depending on where you are on the planet, that Mercury is going to move into the sign of Leo. Now, this in and of itself, okay, yeah, Mercury goes into the sign of Leo, but once a year may not be as exciting, but this time is different. On the one hand, this move of Mercury towards the end of the week into a brand new part of the sky, it is also signaling the slowing down of Mercury because this is where Mercury is going to go retrograde uh, as we move into July. However, the other thing is that it is as Mercury moves into this new part of the sky, what's called zero degrees of Leo. This is the eclipse point that took place back in January. And this is gonna be the first of three mercurial activations of the eclipse point. The first one is now. The second one will be mid-July and then mid-August will be the third and final one. I will be here to talk about it every step of the way, but it's important to pay attention to what starts showing up for you now not only because of how it will speak to the larger Mercury retrograde season, but also because of how it will hearken to and raise your awareness and your conversations and your connections to what was taking place at the eclipse back in January. And so I would invite you to watch the January monthly horoscope again. You can see that here on YouTube. Um, because it was in that horoscope that I spoke about this eclipse back in January. 
And it is now that this eclipse is being activated that will bring a further, as I said, clarity, connections, communications as to what transpired way back then. So important to pay attention now, this is the eclipse point activation. And if you think about it in the perspective of the collective, the sign of Leo has to do with a few things. One is celebrity. Another is the rulers and the kings, okay? This is important for a few reasons as well. And that is because we are right around the corner of July. July is gonna be an eclipse month. It will be huge, okay, for a lot of people out there. And so to give you a little bit of a preview, as we move into next week, next week, we are going to have the first of two eclipses, a solar eclipse, and that is all about the new and the next. It's about these bright new beginnings just showing up very karmically so. I will talk about that in the monthly horoscope for July uh, for each and every sign. And of course, I'll be here each and every week. But it's almost like as we have this new beginning, as we have the sense of fresh starts, we also have this deepening appreciation of karmic closures that are happening simultaneously. This deepening understanding of what it is that we truly are ready to leave behind and perhaps left behind back in january maybe we closed the door but we didn't realize it well this is where we're going to realize it and as part of the closure will also come the sense of beginning so there's a, a sense of what is transpiring now not only hearkening to january but in some way also preparing the ground for the big eclipse set to take place next week so pay attention to your life because this isn't the one and only opportunity by far. This isn't the only moment by far, but rather this is a part of an important summer that is laid out for us now. A summer where we will understand ourselves more deeply, connect with each other in more honest and meaningful ways. And at the same time, find ourselves understanding what our unique light requires of us owning our right to share that light and to shine brightly and understanding where it is that we can put any kind of limiting beliefs or limiting identities behind that get in the way of us our truly owning our full light now that's a big part of the leo energy and that is part of what is going to start to be revealed to us more and more starting this week and in the weeks to come what I love about this week for us, well, look, I am going to say it is the eclipse activation. I started to mention, you know, Leo energy, it's about celebrity, it's about royalty. And so we can expect matters that might have been just a beginning or just a rumor way back in January um, now to come into further consideration or now more information to come forward based on what was transpiring in some very public lives way back in January. But this is the beginning of a process that we are in as a culture, as a world, uh, in terms of what it is that we're paying attention to. But I always think that as much as it is what's happening on the macro level, what's happening on a micro is so valuable as well. And it is about us knowing that there is something special in all of us. And in that way, none of us is special. And that's actually quite liberating. The energy of the sun and Uranus, well, that's also very equalizing as well. That's a real sense of understanding this uh, beautiful dichotomy that can liberate us and empower us at the same time. That sense that, yes, we are all special, but also, because we're all special, none of us is special. There's something that is so enlivening about that. And there's something that then allows us to just truly be ourselves, to play, to relax, to not take life so seriously. And the great thing is, is that when it is that we just allow ourselves to step into some truth or some groove, some sense that everything doesn't need to be so big and consequential, but we can be in the moment and just allow ourselves to be open to inspiration. Well, the thing is the inspiration that comes, well, it can feel divine. It can feel blessed and it can propel us towards a more optimistic future. 
Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? What are you excited about? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. And hello to all my Premier people. Thank you for joining me live. Thank you for joining me on the replay. Of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. And of course, I have brand new decade ahead special horoscopes available for download on my website and free in the superstar space as well. Thank you so much for all the amazing feedback they've been getting. Uh, one phenomenon that has been happening that means so much to me is that people have been purchasing one and then they watch it and then they come back and they purchase a bunch more of different signs. And so that tells me that there are a lot of people who are gaining value out of these and I appreciate that so much. And of course the superstars as well have been uh, giving a lot of positive feedback of the Decade Ahead horoscopes and my brand new site as well. So thank you uh, to all of you out there for your love, for your support, for your trust. It all means so much to me, thank you. And we are very, very close to the next session of Synchronicity University Summer School. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be an extended summer school with a full six weeks, six Saturdays of classes. Now, if you can join us live, that's amazing. But if you can't join live, that's okay. There will be a replay available that you can learn from infinitely to everyone who signs up and uh, it's going to be a wonderful learning environment i'm really looking forward to it and these classes they have a more practical component so if you've taken classes with me before you know i really like to facilitate a personal connection your own personal connection uh, with the sky and we're going to do that but i'll make sure to go through different houses or different signs where it applies uh, to help you to really understand and get some of the foundations in place at the same time though, there is a prerequisite to these classes and that is my book, Astrology Realized. Um, if you have the knowledge of that book, the basics that I cover there, you'll be just fine. You'll do really well in these classes. If it is that you're a total newbie and you don't have that basic information, I would invite you to check out my book on Amazon, Astrology Realized. Uh, the link should be below. All the links of everything I talk about are below but it is there that uh, you should be able to access my book and I hope that you enjoy it. But yes, these classes are coming up. We are gonna be looking at a whole bunch of topics. So we'll be looking at childhood in the astrology chart, further thoughts on forgiveness. So last session I did a class on forgiveness. It was very popular. And so this is part two of that class. We'll be looking at the midheaven. We'll be looking at the part of fortune. Uh, we will be looking at astrological magic and then we will have one uh, sort of open follow-up questions kind of class where you can come with your questions and I will answer them. So we are going to have a lot of fun and go on a journey together and you can learn more about that and join us at the link below. And of course, in-person events as well. I'm going to be in Baltimore with the NCGR conference in uh, very soon in about what two months now wow it's gonna come fast i'm really looking forward to it i love meeting friends and fans in person and so that is going to be at the ncgr conference in baltimore some of the brightest minds in astrology are going to be speaking there uh, and it really is a privilege to be part of such an incredible group i'm really looking forward to that uh, and links are below and of course in january of 2020 i will be uh, as part of a cruise event taking place, a life-changing, transformational uh, cruise event. Uh, and it is really about uh, getting us out of our comfort zone and sharing a journey together. Thank you so much to all the people who have already signed up, who felt karmically aligned with this event. Um, if it is that you'd like to learn more, check out the links below. Um, but I will say that this is something that I've never done before. And I know that for me, it is a journey as well. And again, there are truly notable astrologers and spiritual thinkers who are going to be part of this. And it is very much about us being together, sharing this journey together, and in some way being changed, like leaving this cruise event and feeling more connected, feeling more clear about who we are and more aware of spirit. 
And this cruise event is going to happen under the light of the Pluto Saturn conjunction, powerful symbol of transformation and bringing hope and bringing love into this brand new phase of humanity. What is that going to look like for you in your own individual journey? How can you facilitate that sense of love and hope in others during these times of transitions? That's really what this uh, whole cruise is meant to empower you to do. And so I am one of the teachers, one of a few different teachers, and I'm looking forward to that, but I'm also there to learn. I'm also there to be open. And as I said, we are on this journey together and I am truly looking forward to it. So if it is something that you feel inspired to learn more about, again, please do click on the link below. The sooner you sign up, the more likely it is that the cabin rate is gonna be lower, the more likely it is that the uh, registration for the classes are gonna be cheaper as well. And so, yes, if you are so inspired, please do uh, have a look and I look forward to meeting you on board. I'm in talks right now for all kinds of events coming up in 2020. So that should be really very exciting uh, already. I don't know how much of it I'm ready to announce just yet. I'll give you a little bit of a hint. September, Colorado. I'm coming for you, Colorado, in September. But lots more details to come on that as well. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. I appreciate my friends, my fans, my superstars, each and every one of you so very much. I appreciate the time that we share together. I appreciate those of you who stay right till the end uh, and continue to watch through my announcements as well, all of it. And whether you, whatever you do and however it is that you choose to interact with this video, uh, whatever small part I play in your sacred journey, it means so much to me and you have my heartfelt gratitude. Thank you again, and thank you for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.